are you? Who, who are you to talk to me? <laughs> you think that that is where the drama stopped in Abi? I was practically being deported back to Nigeria. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Favor Ojika and I'm super excited to have you guys back here with me. If you're a new person on my channel, welcome. I don't know where you've been but I'm glad you're here. My name is Favor Ojika. I'm a lifestyle vlogger and I basically vlog about my experiences here in the United States of America. All they have been rocking actually has been from all that hair so okay. Without further ado guys, if you want to continue hearing about my immigration story and how I actually came to the Obodo Yibo, then Biko keep on watching hey guys so my podcast just say it by favor Ojika, is now available on all your podcasting platforms please check the description box below for more information welcome back beautiful people i remember coming back from the airport to abuja my parents wanted me to have the flight experience just so it's not new for me when i'm traveling out i remember them telling me at the embassy when i went that i wasn't supposed to travel until a month before my school started i told my dad i was like daddy this is what they told me. But I felt like he was too excited to even grasp the information. So he was like, eh, okay, okay, no problem. So then I started thinking about, you know, the next thing for you to do now, flight. Hey, I was supposed to literally start school in the spring. I got my visa around, was it September? So they started looking for flight around October, November. Because they said if they buy the flight, and this is between my uncle and my dad, because they were like, if they buy it in December, it's going to be more expensive because a lot of people are going to come back in December. So they decided to buy it in November. My flight was slated for November 14th, 2012. And I remember my, my dad saying, Oh, you already bought your ticket, so you should be ready to leave in November. So basically, I got my visa in September, so all through October I was at home doing absolutely nothing, just preparing myself to travel. So I told some of my friends and I was like, oh I'm sorry I cannot come back to Benin, I'll keep in touch, I promise. My friend Jennifer was somebody that I still keep in touch with even till today, you know. So they were, you know, happy for me and they were really, really excited and whatnot. But yeah, now the time now came for me to leave, oh my god. That day that I was leaving, there was nothing my ears did not hear all our neighbors and their children everybody because my dad you know told the people that were close to us our family members and whatnot oh chichi by the way is traveling to america or blah 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 she's going there for school what 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 hey all our family members that were around at the time they came and they kept advising and advising and advising don't bring shame to your family don't this don't do this don't do that you know you are the other hey i said i've heard you know how the time i just kept saying i've heard Yes, ma. Yes, yes, yes. You know how those yes, yes when I smell and like, you guys should leave with Kelo. Leave okay. Kelo. I have heard you. I will not bring shame to this family. Continue. Why will I bring shame to the family? I will not. I, I was so excited. I was super excited, you guys. I got to the freaking airport. Told my parents bye bye. All the people that carry bags, right? The, the people that carry your bags. The man was not there. He wasn't like, oh. You need to give me 1,000 naira. I was like, eh, for what? Where will I get 1,000 naira? I've already changed all the money that I have and I've given it to my siblings and blah, blah, blah. They said, eh, I saw your mommy and your daddy go and ask them for money. I'm like, what the heck is this? Anyways, I went and I spoke to them. my parents. They gave me money. They said, just give it to him. Just give it to him. They are just hungry. Don't mind that them. Just give it to them. Don't allow them to spoil your mood. That's what my mom said. <laughs> I was on my way to America. Off to America I go. I remember the very first dude that was beside me, this man, he was from English, and he was just there eating everything that was on the menu and I was like, eh, eh, I'm not going to eat the one that is going to spoil my stomach this night. Mbawo. The one that can pronounce the name now is Coke. Madam, bring Coke for me. Should people have Coke here? Bring Coke, I'll drink Coke. <laughs> and then I remember being in Paris waiting for my flight and I met this old couple, spoke to them, they were so sweet and then I eventually boarded the flight, off I came to America. Got to America, I possessed the land, I was like, oh father, I'm possessing this land. I was, you know, speaking prophetically, I was saying all these things like, oh I've reached this place, I'm, you know, possessing my possession, this land you answered to me, said all these amazing prophetic things, hey! So I got there, filled out the form. And then I was waiting for my turn. And then when they were attending to me, they were like, oh, I see here that you are actually, I don't understand, you are, you are an F1 student. I was like, yes, I am, I am, I am. <laughs> and then the lady was like, oh, okay, okay. Asked me a few other questions and I answered that, smiling. I was like, oh, this place looks nice, huh? It looks very beautiful. We do keep quiet. And then she looked at me and was like, huh, huh. 
in my head, I'm like, that is your business. Come, Masarangi, I'm already here. <laughs> And then after like a few minutes, she came back to me and she was like, um, unfortunately, we won't let you enter the country. I was like, why? Are you joking? <laughs> you have to be joking. I traveled all the way from Nigeria. Yes, yes, yes. 16 hours journey. Minus, minus, uh, what do you call it? Layover. <laughs> I've been on the air for almost 24 hours. And you are telling me that I cannot, I cannot what? For what? Why? Why? Where? Hey, madam. You need to explain yourself. She was like, oh, you are an F1 student. So your visa does not stipulate you to enter the country until a month before. I was like, this is just, everything she was saying was entering my ear, flying out. She's like, madam, I do not understand what you're saying. I have no clue. Okay. She said, um, sorry, ma, do you have any belongings? I was like, yes, yes, I do. I do have belongings. She was like, would you mind go grabbing those? I was like, of course. <laughs> let me laugh. Let me let me, let me laugh. <laughs> Jesus, Christ. I should have known that these useless people were setting me up <laughs> for a bag to send that mission. Yeah, she was like, unfortunately, we have to send you back. We have to put you on the next available flight back to Nigeria. I was like, this has to be a joke. She said you came in too early. I was like, yes, because I have family here. My uncle and my cousins and my, my aunt, everybody stays here. And I'm trying to get to know the culture. That was the reason why they paid for. And besides, I got this visa in September, though. They said yes, but it's stipulated that you don't enter the country until a month before that. I'm sure they told you that. The embassy. I was like, can I at least talk to my uncle? And thank God I had my uncle's number. So the good thing was that I had my uncle's number. They called my uncle. You know, I spoke to him on the phone and I said, oh, they, they, they are not letting me in. And by the way, guys, everybody was at the airport. My uncle, my aunt, my cousins, my grandmother, everybody was at the airport waiting for me. My uncle was kind of mad. I had to beg him. I said, uncle, I beg. Since they said I will come back in three weeks, no problem. I will go. Oh, mahala. It really, really is crazy. But I was able to just be strong at that moment. Two police officers came and they were like, we appreciate the fact that you've been, you know, cordial and you've been cooperating with us since. We apologize for what's going on. We're going to give you 10 minutes to see your family. But after that, we have to put you on the next available flight to Nigeria. <laughs> like one prisoner. A homie. I felt like they were deporting me to Nigeria. I was practically being deported back to Nigeria. I said, okay, no problem. I followed them. Hey, my God, I'm choice. Do I have a choice? No, I followed them. I saw my family, hugged them, spent some time. My aunt kept encouraging me. She said, don't worry. Everything will be fine. You'll be back here in three weeks before you know it. My grandmother was like, come on, sit down. There's food, everything. Ah, it broke my heart into pieces. And then my uncle had to explain to her that I was going back. She was like, why is she going back? She just got here. My uncle was like, well, I'll explain to you, mama. My uncle said, I'm very sorry about this. I was like, it's fine, did it? It's okay, I'll be back. The police was like, it's time. And then I followed them, told these people bye bye. And as I was telling them bye bye, my heart broke into 20 million pieces. And I was like, I cannot believe I actually came to the airport. I only smelled the air in Minneapolis, in the American one, just the air. <laughs> I could not contain my tears. The police people kept saying, I'm really sorry. I was like, Shut, come on, talk, don't, 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 don't tell me sorry. Don't, sorry. Sorry what? Are you in my shoes? Do you know what it feels like? I don't blame you people. If you're sorry, then do something about it. I was shivering in my coat. I was just shivering and crying to the extent that there was no tears anymore in my system, to be honest. You know how, how much you cry? You cry so much that the tank is empty. That was how I felt, you know? I sat down then, I was just observing everything I was going. I was just looking at every detail, the walls, the painting, <laughs> people breathing around me. I was like, dang, that is American breath. People are breathing in America. This is the American air. Eh? This is the American code. This is what people want to kill me with AC, but still, it's the American life. Eh? This is the America that my enemies don't want me to enjoy. Hi. And then all of a sudden, I saw a couple. Oh God, I'll never forget this. A couple, right? They just arrived. And I think they were questioning the wife of why she overstayed the last time she came into the country. And then they were trying to give, the mom was trying to give some sort of excuse, like to explain what happened. I think she had to go to the hospital or something. I don't know. The lady said, do you have any luggage? Me that was doing, <laughs> the way I just started laughing. <laughs> and the laugh was from, depression it was more of ah oga you are going home <laughs> you are so going home oga 
Uh, the minute they try to bring your luggage or ask you about your luggage, you are going to your fatherland. You are going to your fatherland. You are going to your fatherland. That was basically what it was. I was like, you are so going to your fatherland. You are not going to be here. Because <laughs> that is what they did to me. I am living proof. After some minutes, they came back and they were like, oh, we've already processed your flight. You are ready to go. And then they escorted me to the plane. I sat down at the plane and I was just like, God, my life. So I'm living this America like this. Wow. And then the man beside me just made the mistake of asking me, Pere, small question. So, were you visiting? <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I looked at him and I was like, hey. Okay. I just came. Uh, and they told me to go back to my country. The man would have gotten the queue and just left me alone. But no, he kept asking questions. He said, What happened? I, I'm sorry. What went wrong? I said, Ah. Mm. They said I came in too early. Me with myself, I started explaining to the man. I started explaining. I was explaining to the, to the point that honestly, I can't really remember what happened after that. I think I slept off. I was so sad. I slept throughout the entire flight. Me that was waiting to get to America when I was coming. I legit slept through till we got to Paris. And that was like, I think about 10 hours, right? I was so tired. I remember a few times the hostess came with food, you know, and I was like, drop whatever it is you want to drop. Give me Coke. Do you understand? Give me something. Like I just said, give me cook. And then she brought cook. And then because of the way I was trying to stay um sleep on the plane, she came to me and she was like, Oh, we cannot allow you to you will spill the drink. I said, please take the drink. Take everything and go and leave me alone. Please just leave me alone. I'm not interested anymore. Take it and go. And I, I kind of felt bad because I felt like I was being rude to the lady. I got to Paris and then I requested to talk to my parents. They gave me a phone, I called them. I saw a bunch of other black people there. I was like, ah, they deporting this once too. So I'm in the company of people that they are deporting. Hi, Chineka, Talama, Honowa. I called my parents. Oh, they were like anxious. They were like, are you okay? Is everything okay? My love, have you eaten? My love, my dad has never called me. Uh, scratch that, it's not going to happen. My father said, my daughter, have you eaten? <laughs> he said, my daughter, have you eaten? I was like, no. Because to be honest, I lost my appetite. My dad was like, please, fine, try it, eat something. I said, mm, I've had. He said, please, anything, you just eat something. Oh, eat something. Ah, tears. Ay, ay, ay. I said, let me talk to my mom. I, told, I said, daddy, I'm not coming back to the house. <laughs> he was like, what do you mean? I said, I'm not coming back to Kuba. I'm not coming back to the house. He was like, my mom was like, don't you trust me? It's okay, I already arranged places for you. Just come back first. I cannot go back to that compound where everybody have finished admonishing me, have finished counseling me, have finished telling me everything I'm supposed to be in life. And then I'll not come back. Who would believe that they, that they told me that I came in too early? And how do I, what phase do I have to come and start explaining myself one after the other? I start telling, I was just, I was just sick and tired of it. I was like, I'm going through some sort of emotional stress and I don't want nobody to add their stress. I know Nigerians, they'll be like, yeah, sure. Came back to Eliko. I shall say the deporter. The deporter. Sure. Oh, she's copious. It's a lie. I'm sure they deported her ass. I'm very sure. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think my neighbors were like that, but I just did not want to deal with it. That was the truth. And so I told my parents, I was like, I don't want to go back home. Immediately I landed the airport. I remember going to take my bag and then Nepa just took light. The man behind me was like, useless people. Even in the airport, they've taken the lights. Very useless country. And then in my mind, I just adjusted myself and I just acted. I was like, oh, really? They do that here? <laughs> so stupid. The man was like, ah, my sister, that is how they do. Hi. I was like, this man can't even come by. Yeah. like, useless people. That's how they do. Even in the airport where they have dignitaries from all over the world, they will still disgrace us. Useless. Sir, can I please use your phone? He was like, oh, my dear, it's fine, it's fine. I was busy forming accent I did not have. <laughs> I thought I entered the dumb out of Minneapolis, so I already had accent. Mm. And then I called my dad, told the man, thank you. We drove to where my mom was. And my mom was like, you know, trust me. I don't arrange everything. My mom was so happy. She was like, even though I just saw you less than six <laughs> hours well, ago, I'm happy to see you again. And she was like, oh, I have three places for you. You have to choose one. So I decided to choose a place in the city. It was like, I was not in America for three weeks, but it felt like I was in America because it was our in-laws place. The man's house is, ooh, it was mwah. Oh, I enjoyed myself, but I was hiding. Most of the friends I was calling, I will be calling them via private number. Ah, because I did not want to answer question. Please forgive me, forgive me. It's just, I did not have the energy. But I just did not want to 
explain myself and that's the honest truth so i just played along with it they'll be like how is that place how is america hey how is the place <laughs> i was like oh this place is fire okay. eh? oh. the streets are just shining like this blah, 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 blah. They were like, eh? black people everywhere everywhere, everywhere. i was in otaku abuja Chai. i was in otaku abuja when I go to silver bed like this, I'll wear glasses and, and be hiding. Glasses and total neck, like a thief. Eventually, after three weeks, I went back to the airport and I was able to come back to America this time for real. And I remember driving to my uncle's place from the airport and I was just looking at the snow outside and I was like, damn, I'm in America. I'm actually in America. Wow, I'm finally here. Wow. Anyways, guys, that is my story. I know it was kind of long, partly why I had to cut it into two different parts just so you could understand. If you want to hear more stories about me coming to America and how I had to struggle on different levels, please let me know because trust me, regardless of what anybody tells you, life abroad is actually not easy, okay? And I have many stories coming and I'm, I cannot wait to share those stories with you guys. If you actually found this entertaining, please go ahead and tell me how your coming to america story was leave that comment in the comment section let's just keep it going let's keep it chatting and let me know what you guys think about my stories <laughs> Oh, wait to actually hear from you guys so please without further ado please do not forget to like this video give it a very huge thumbs up if you liked my story head and share it with your friends and at the same time please do not forget to subscribe to my channel please go ahead and subscribe and i'll see you guys in my next video Mwah. bye